Hello, hello, this is Christina Vashko and you're watching Motherpreneur TV where we kiss our excuses goodbye and cozy up to a life we love. Now, I'm pretty sure you heard this before. You are never too old to do anything. Yeah, of course you have. Now, the question I have is, how difficult is it really to recreate yourself at a certain age, let's say 50? My guest today, she's a grand example of doing just this. This lady, she created a professional career for herself without any previous experiences, without no connections in a field where she initially didn't have a clue about. It is the amazing, fabulous and also talented Marilyn Wilson. Find out how Marilyn morphed from a stay-at-home mom with three children into the unofficial queen of the Vancouver Fashion Week. Yeah, hello, how cool is this? I mean, if this isn't enough, Marilyn recently published her first book, Life Outside the Box, The Extraordinary Journeys of 10 Unique Individuals. Enjoy! Marilyn, thank you so much for having time. Welcome to Motherpreneur TV. It was quite a drive out here, but it was well worth it. I have it been, It's a joyous feeling in this house, and I'm really excited about being a part. I'm getting goosebumps Woo! already. Yay! 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 <laughs> Welcome. I am excited too, because we have actually never met in person. So this is the power of the internet. Very cool. Yes. And congratulations on your first book. This is fantastic. Um, I never thought I would be able to finish a book. It took it took over a year. It took a lot of support. Uh, I have a great community around me that kept saying, "You could do it, Marilyn." And to I turned uh, and entered a new decade three days before I did my pre-launch in Vancouver with over 250 people. We had a drag queen. We had dancers. Everybody celebrated. We celebrated as a community because honestly, it took the whole community of support for me to get to this point. So my uh, my launch was a thank you to them and a celebration, letting them be a part of my joy. I love this, and I also what I love more is when you what you just said. You started a new life with forty nine. Yes. And Marilyn, you are the grand example of it's never too late. We are yeah. never too old. At the age of 49, I realized my children didn't need me as much. I, they had been bullied and I'd been very involved in their life and keeping them safe. And suddenly they needed me to back off. So I just literally sat down on a whim looking at Craigslist ads of things to do and saw an ad for writing uh, for a New York magazine. They asked for three submissions. Uh, I sent them two. Two were accepted and suddenly here I was. I hadn't written since university. I had to figure out how to interview, how to do articles, how to get photo shoots done. Uh, it truly came out of nowhere. I just kind of trusted my instincts and a door opened and I jumped through. No idea what I was doing. Hang on, so you haven't written before in your life? No. I, I had great grades in English. I always I read a lot. Yeah. Like the basics are there. You yeah. don't get there if you if you're poor at English and don't read. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen. But um, the fashion world in particular has a lot of opportunity because of all the online magazines to write. And they would let me interview somebody and write. And I'd always been intrigued by people. So I go to my first interview with this lady and it went two hours long. She's become a great mentor, but. I had goosebumps. I have goosebumps now thinking about it. It was life changing. I'd always been interested in people. I'd studied counseling and psychology and felt it was too depressing. And it was a return to that love of people, but it was positive. Right. They were sharing their stories with me, and I had the privilege of writing up. What I gave back was was an article on them. So they gave me the story I was I was dying to hear, and I gave them the press that they wanted. And so the concept is Ujama. We work together, we raise our spirits, we raise our economy, we raise our our presence in life, and we grow by by benefiting each other. Do you question in this stuff? No. Ah, that gets better and better. I was I was dressing from Costco and Payless yeah. because I was home with the kids. I had no money. Yeah. We were a one-income family. And I, I went into Not my that. first no. fashion week with used shoes, used clothes. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I, nobody would talk to me. I had to go talk to them. 
but I so wanted to interview people that I was willing to do what it took. Um, and that's why I finally got some advice and it took me a long time to get a better wardrobe because I had to go slowly because of money, but you know, I didn't know what fit me. I had three kids and my body had changed. And so I actually went to one stylist over four years, twice a year, and we put new basics in that, that looked good on me. And she talked to me about my body and explained to me how I could look really good. I'm ever so grateful. So after that, I have gone on to get the fun pieces that spark up my wardrobe. But just to get good basics in my wardrobe that I could put on and know they, they made the good stuff look good and hid the bad stuff away, it's, it's fabulous. And so as we get older, we have to give ourselves permission to wear what we want because it really is personal. It must make me feel good. It must uh, be the relationship I want, which is, is I want it to be fun, I want it to have a story, like know the designer or where it came from or have seen it. And, and I want to feel good in it. So if we know what looks good, shopping gets so much easier. I, my reputation is actually as a fashion writer, which is hilarious because for me, fashion is about what I personally want, not about what's happening in the fashion world. I love the artists, but I want my clothes to speak to me. But because so many of the 150 interviews probably 85 to 90 percent have been with people working in that industry. Mm -hmm. I tend to be uh, labeled as a fashion writer. <laughs> Sometimes people say I'm the mother of Vancouver fashion. That's not really true. There's Virginia Leaning and many people before me. But I do love my community here and the fashion community in particular has raised me up and supported me and said you can do this despite the fact that I don't seem to be able to name all the top designers or know what's on the runway. So we all find our community and, and the road getting where we need to go sometimes takes us side places. We've been brought up and again I'm older so I was brought up when women were supposed to stay home with the kids and there was only certain careers and, and I, it was a very religious environment. Letting all of that go and listening to my heart I think I do a lot of good by sharing people's stories. It's changed my life. And now, I would really like to know, as the mother who is married, who has three children as well, what did your husband say when you said, oh, I start writing? Did you say, oh, yeah, well done, sweetheart, yeah, I go, go for it? Or did you this, say, oh, this, you is, this is a favorite question and I never get asked it, so I'm so grateful. When uh, I started, I think my husband and children, uh, I'm very intense, were just happy that I had something to do with my energy and focus rather than them. Uh, but over the 10 years, I don't think they really understood what I was doing. Um, the stress bothered them. He really wanted me just happy. I wasn't bringing in money, so it didn't feel like a job. He felt it was a hobby. So when I finally ran my launch, and there were over 250 people there, and I'm talking on stage, and I'm getting cheered, and he finally got it. My friends I'd spent 25 years with finally got it. My oldest son, who was in the audience, finally got it. They saw me outside of the house and outside of the mother and friend, and they saw what I was doing and why and my passion for it, and how, what a good response it was yeah, getting from people. So and my husband spent the next two or three days calling people, bragging about his wife. My, my, one of the ladies looked at me and said, I have sat next to you for 25 years and I had no idea you were doing that. So it's like worlds colliding. So the people that came to my launch that know me as a writer and magazine editor and stuff have never seen me the way my children see me. Yeah. And they still haven't. But my children and husband suddenly saw the person I am away from them and intelligent and bright and respected and, and it was a shock for them. So my youngest still hasn't seen that, he had to work that night, but I think it's very hard for our children and our family, they don't see us at work, they don't see who we are, we're not bringing big paychecks home when we're changing careers or starting a new career at 40, 50, 60 mm -hmm. because women so often are doing that now. It's probably the biggest trend in our generation is women giving themselves permission to follow their passion when their families don't need them as much. Hang on, <laughs> the two of us, we find each other. Yay! And we both love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, but what would be your advice to women who say, mm, I would like to do what you do? Not necessarily fashion and writing, yeah. but something new. Learning to hear your inner voice is so important. I think it's important to have people around you that you feel supported by and you support because that helps you have more confidence. The second thing that was the advice given to me is, is do all your research. So I don't mean look for things, but look at what your talents are. Like even the ones people have said are supposedly, again, quotes negative. Um, look at what your interests are, get out, do things, go places, listen to people, what do they do? 
look at all the, what have you wanted to do? Like I, finding a picture of myself in a journalism club in high school, I don't even remember joining it. I found that out after I started writing. So, so our, our instincts can speak to us. So what, what I was told was you, you put as much information in as you can, and then you get very, very, very quiet, and you clear your mind and see what arises. Just get quiet and, and look at how many years I was in the journalism hut club in high school. I started writing at 49. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the journey doesn't happen right away. Sometimes there's other stops along the way, but you are looking to encompass a new career as you, as you get older. You have to accept the fact it's going to be hard, that you have to really love it and want it. It has to make your heart sing because otherwise you're just going to burn out. It is not easy. It's not going to happen. Just, roads don't happen easy. The good stuff comes from sheer hard work. And this is the highlight right now. This is oh, the it makes my heart oh, sing. I get goosebumps. Oh, Life Outside the Box. Oh, uh, my publisher picked the title Life Outside the Box because okay. Extraordinary Journey of 10 Unique Individuals were all unique. These are just 10 I picked out of 150 because I felt they went well together and they told a wider, a, a good wide variety. Now here I must say, I must honestly say, I didn't read all of it. There are 10 individual stories, so what I like is that it's very easy to read because yes. you do, it's not one story where you have to keep on reading. You no. read one and then and you can you, put it away for months. And then, yes, and it it's like 10, 10 yes. mini books. So I read four. Which was your favorite? I liked, I liked the perfume guy. Because your nurse is very, he was at our launch, he is amazing. Oh, I love that. You know, it's no business sexual He's business. What is your legacy what you would like to leave with this book? This is my chance to reach out outside my circle. I want you to walk away feeling empowered. I want you to walk away looking at your life and finding where the noise is and eliminate it. I want you to live your life without apology. You don't owe an apology. You are exactly who you are meant to be. You are exactly who you are meant to be. And your journey is not anybody else's. Your journey, your definition of success is yours alone. It, it should make your, you happy. I mean, somebody asked me my definition of success. I didn't even have one. I wasn't raised that you would be successful. You did a life of service. So what is your definition of success? Finishing this book is one. But, but I love your pink. It suits your personality. I think you just rocked it. Ooh, thank you. I walked in and I went, I got to talk to this Ooh. person. <laughs> yeah. And you said that it wept you in from the driveway. It's, it's friendly and happy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Now, what I said, you are the grand example of walking <laughs> your talk. Really good. Now, where can we find this amazing, wonderful, okay. great book? Life Outside the Box, The Extraordinary Journey of 10 Unique Individuals, I was told I need to give you the whole tagline there, is uh, online right now. Mm -hmm. I hope it'll end up at stores. In Canada, it's at Chapters and, and Amazon. In the US, it's at Chapters and Barnes and & Noble. And how about this? If you happen to have a really nice story, can our viewers contact you, get in touch with you? Yes. I'm very excited to say I have a friend of Andy Winter who has talked to me about uh, helping me edit a series of books where people submit their own stories. Wow. And it would be released under this. So I, I do want to do more books under this where it's from interviews I came but and, and put mm -hmm. out books where people can give them a voice, let them have a voice for their unique stories. So that has not begun yet, but if anybody's interested, this is a great way to start opening that door. I'm ready. That's fantastic. What an awesome, generous offer. This is the first yeah. person I've told. This is a first for the Motherpreneur TV. This is a first. And Randy, this is for you. <laughs> Marilyn, thank you so much. Stay the way you are. Don't do anything I can do. <laughs> it's taken me 10 years to and get to this place. You are <laughs> rocking, girl. You're fantastic. You are a This is a pleasure. Daughter. This is a pleasure, but again, this is 10 years journey. You're seeing yeah. me at the end. If you saw me at the start in my value village with my, my little hunch and lack of confidence, I, this is a journey. Right. Changing is a journey and mm -hmm. self permission. It's hard. It's okay if you cry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> oh man. Juicy. Thank this you great. so much. Okay. We're done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the book. <laughs>Here we have it. We really are never too old to recreate ourselves, aren't we? I mean, Marilyn, isn't she just fantastic? <laughs> now, I would like to hear from you. 
have you reached a certain age and you decided, mm, let me change my life? Yes? What did you do and how did you do it? Now, if you haven't reached that mature age of 50, did you recreate yourself at a different age? Let's say 30, 40. Oh, we would love to hear from you. Please share your story or a quick comment with all of us below the video in the comment section. Also, if you felt inspired by Marilyn's story, please share it with your network of friends. You can also subscribe to weekly episodes here on Motherpreneur TV. And with this, our time is up. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And until I do, remember, we are more than just mothers. We are an inspiration to ourselves, to our families and to the world.